Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name's Josh. Happy Thursday. Hope you're doing okay. Uh, we're not really doing snarkmas today just because I'm like, I just need a snark break to be honest with you. And I don't want to like overdo the snark. But today we're talking about the Gosselin situation. And there's a lot to unpack here. It's a pretty new topic to me. I never did watch John and Kate Plus 8, but I've been... I've been compiling the videos that I want to talk about, and I think today's a pretty good day to talk about it. It's something a little bit different for Snarkmas, obviously, but still something really, really important. Thanks for joining me today. So, but of course, because it's Snarkmas, we are going to spin the old cookie wheel, and somebody's going to win a prize. All right, so let's win a prize together. Maybe. All right. He's got his teddy bear. Renee Cleland, you win a prize. Reach out to me, Josh, at the thedadchallengepodcast.com with your shirt size and your address, and I will hook you up. Otherwise, let's go. Hey, thanks for joining me on this channel, guys. If you're new here, there's a couple ways you can support. You can get on the wheel by becoming a Patreon or a YouTube member. You get over to my Teespring store, buy some merch. You can buy me coffee, whatever you feel, or you could just like and subscribe or not just watch. Any support is great. And I thank you so much for being here. You know, we've been in a lot of places on this channel. We've talked about a lot of things, a lot of different topics. And one of the, obviously, the main things I talk about is exploitation of children. And my voice has grown quite loud in this topic of child exploitation on social media in general. And I really, really appreciate you guys being here for that. And I don't even exist on this channel and this topic that I talk about without someone like John and Kate Plus 8. The show that was probably one of the most popular reality television shows on TV anywhere at any time. Okay, just like 19 Kids and Counting and the, and the roll-offs, Little People, Big World, I think it was called, or something like that. I don't, e and I don't even think that family vlogging exists in its modern-day format without these trailblazers, right? These people who did this before. And everybody watched this stuff, and nobody really realized back then. I mean, there were probably some people who realized that it's exploitation, but it wasn't really a mainstream thought until, like, recently, until the past couple of years. And so we don't really get to talk about child exploitation again without going back to the OGs who did this. And Johnny Cake Plus 8, according to Wikipedia, now, I never watched the show. I mean, I've seen a, an episode or two growing up. Everybody knew about it. We all understood what it was. We all understood that I think that this Karen was literally like John and Kate plus eight. Kate is the original Karen haircut. She is the one who started the meme, the haircut. She's the Karen. She's the OG Karen, the one that was like a bitch who wanted to speak to managers and always had to have her own way and everything else. And again, it's very, very telling this type of person that John and Kate were because that's exactly who these parents who we talk about on the internet are now. They're this, it's definitely a type, right? Family vloggers, mommy influencers, daddy influencers, all these people, there is a type, right? They're all pretty much the same. They all pretty much look the damn same. Minus Alicia. I don't know how she got into that club. It's like she forced her way in with an ax at the door because she's nothing like them. Right? It's generally a yummy mummy looking girl who's all got it all put together. Um, they get their nails done every two days. They get like the perfect clothes. There's no color in their house. There's an aesthetic that has to be they, the, a certain thing. Their hair has to be a certain way. They all have to have, you know, fake lips, fake eyes, fake boob, big butt lifts, everything else. They all do the same thing, right? They're all the exact same. And they all stem from this type of person who she is, Kate and John. Now, a lot of people are like, Josh, you only call it women. I don't actually call, only call it women ever. But Johnny Kate plus A, I think, is one of the main examples of two people that are equally to blame for their kids' bullshit that they put them through. Again, and I know it's going to sound like, oh, here you go, Josh, but it's true. Kate wanted to continue on this life where John didn't. He actually started realizing how detrimental it was, and he's the one who tried to stop it. So if you're wondering why, why I lean unfairly on the women of these worlds, is because they're the ones who perpetuate it. They are the ones who are generally the center of attention in these channels. They're the ones who do it. It's very rare you find a dude that's in the center of it. But for the most part, the, the ones I'm talking about, like Jess Fam, Doherty Dozen, Sunkiss Butt Jam, and I think we can agree on this, and I've said it multiple times before, it is very much a woman-led industry. Can we agree on that at least? I mean, if you took an, an example of all the family vlogs out there and the attention and time spent with just the women, I think you'd see that it's a very, very female-dominated field, right? So in this case, John woke up later, but according to Wikipedia, 
<clears throat> Johnny Kate Plus 8, later known as Kate Plus 8, is an American reality television series starring Kate Gosselin and John Gosselin and their eight children, which ran from April 4th, 2007 to July 4th, 2017. Okay? That's 10 years on TV. After the success of two one-hour specials chronicling Kate Gosselin and her husband John, surviving sectuplets and twins, and one year later, the series aired on Discovery Health Channel, which is Health Channel, for the first two seasons before moving to TLC, which is called the Learning Channel, by the way. And now TLC has a show coming out about MILFs. I kid you not, with a spin. And it looks ridiculous. And again, they, they make their money. It's not their Learning Channel anymore. It's the, it's the, it's the, the Loser Channel. Burn. During the run, the series was one of the network's highest rated programs, with the fifth season premiere seen by a record at 9.8 million viewers. The most watched show of that evening included broadcast television, twice as many viewers as the show's previous series high. After the Gosselin's divorce in 2009, the final episode of John and Kate Plus 8 aired on November 23rd, 2009, announced by TLC three days earlier. Now look, it's very telling to, re to, to see that their marriage only lasted two years into filming this thing. Which goes to show that doing this shit is not good for a marriage or for kids. And we know that because they're proof of it. The series was later named Kate Plus 8 on June 6, 2010, focusing on Kate as a divorced mother raising the children with John appearing less frequently. However, filming was later suspended due to John's lawyers delivering letters to TLC demanding that they cease and desist production and barred production crews from the couple's Pennsylvania property on October 1, 2009. This led to putting the show's revamping on hold. TLC planned for a series of specials if the series did not go into production. In August 2014, it was announced Kate Plus 8 would return for another season, its third and first after almost three-year hiatus. So that's basically just continued because it was a money-making, massive money-making venture. That's again why a lot of people will call me out. Oh, you only, you know, you're only, you're only angry at women. I'm not. But the reality is, is that John didn't want to do this anymore, and he and he got his lawyers to say, "You're not coming on this property anymore. You're not filming my kids anymore." And he should have had a say in that. But then, you know, I think Kate got custody of the kids, and for the most part, and then shit just hit the fan. Until recently, Colin came out with a video on ET exclusive interview, and it's really, really, really telling. All of these kids grew up on TV and are known and very famous without their consent. And some of them went through some shit. And here's Colin's interview, really, really telling. I was in two inst two different institutions. Um, scary place. I was actually 12 when I got admitted there. And then it was like, I spent my 13th and 14th birthday there. Why were you there? Because your dad said you shouldn't have been there. You know, I came to the conclusion that everybody has their own agenda. You know, my mom had her own agenda. I don't know exactly what that was, but my agenda... Colin, good for you for speaking out, but your mom's agenda was money. All these family vloggers do. All these, the, the number one agenda for family vloggers is money. Always has been, always will be. And then when they make so much money, they don't know what to do with it. Apparently their number two agenda is to like rip off their fans like Ace Family or to get into something that they shouldn't be talking about or to become totally or become people that nobody can recognize anymore. Right. That's it's really, really weird. Money is like uh, money can solve a lot of problems. OK, taking the worry of money away is actually very, very, very good for people generally. But when you start making exorbitant amounts of money on shit that you should not be making exorbitant amounts of money on and somebody who doesn't know what to do with it, it actually ends up ruining a lot of people's families. Yeah, I know what's to make it out on top of that tough spot. At the time, Kate said Colin's institutionalization was due to, quote, special needs. You can't do anything without realizing he's missing. Colin wasn't there. Each unique child is receiving exactly what they need. I don't know, and I haven't seen the show a lot, but I've seen a couple of interviews with her. She's the coldest, hardest witch I have ever seen in my life. And I cover these family vloggers in depth. This woman has zero soul. And if you watch interviews with her, John, how she was berating him and everything else, and he's just a big giant pushover too, it was clear why they got married because she needs to be, you know, the center of attention. And if you don't do it, like, I, she's a nightmare is basically what it is. And these kids have confirmed it. Okay, there's an, and we'll go through all the interviews and stuff like that. There's going to be a lot of videos we're going to do on this channel about these people. This woman has no business being a mother. Just her interviews. Just unapologetically a shitty person. Your mom said, Colin has special needs. There's a fairly fluid diagnosis of what those needs are. This has been a struggle we've had to, for a very long time, and it's one I've dealt with on my own. I felt very alone in this by the same token. It's not something that has only impacted me or him. Our entire family has been impacted. When you hear that, what do you think? Um, it's unfortunate that that's how my mom 
you know, phrased me as a person. Um, you know, I don't see those things, and I don't think anybody else sees those things. But and it's really important. I know I'm gonna pause this a lot just because you know I'm gonna get struck. But really, really important to note that she has to come out with statements to the press when shit like this goes down. Right? Is forced to. Because she's like, it's hard to see, you know, it's hard to get to because they'll notice that he's not there. They'll notice. And she, so she has to make her life about doing press releases and shit about her kids. Even the kids might be going through normal things, which it sounds like she put him in an institution for ADHD or some shit that was not normal to do that, by the way. It sounds like he was just being a troubled teen because he was raised by this person. If you really, really want to see how your kids are going to turn out, you really need to look in a mirror sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. Right, specifically the way you raise your children. You're looking at people like Jess Fam and all these family vloggers that raise their children to be like things that they're really not. Recently, if you look at Jess Fam's uh, Reddit, there's a bit shit going around about Lilia, her daughter, and the fact that she deletes comments about the reality of her daughter's talents. At the same time, I sort of understand you probably shouldn't be talking about Lilia and her talents because a kid is talented no matter what, right? They at least they're trying things and they should be given the space to do those things. How do I say this? But grooming her to be that person because she wants her daughter to be an influencer on this on this channel, that's so detrimental, right? And so they have to come up with statements of so where's where's Caden? Where's this? Or like uh, Micah and James. They don't get canceled until people start saying, where the hell, where the hell is H? Right? They have to live their life in accordance to the people who are watching them. And that should scare everybody who watches that shit. Because you are held accountable to those people that watch you. And that's none of their, and, and in the same token, in the, in the same breath, when they do their apology or when they do their non-apology, like it's none of your damn business, but yeah, it is. Cause you made it everybody's business, but those kids don't get a choice into their business being everybody's business. Does that make sense? Right? They don't have a choice on that. They are everybody's business without their consent. And no parent and, and people who like talk about crazy pieces and crazy middles and Dr. D does and everybody else. And they're like, oh, she asked their permission. Does she ask your permission? Does she have conversations like this? Hey, your business is on the internet. And when you're missing out of this video or something happens, you know, people ask tons of questions about you and your privacy. Do they tell them that? No, they don't. If that's how she sees me, then, you know, that's her point of view. And, and I hope that if we met again one day, she would understand that it's crazy. Know, it's not the case. That's crazy. But you shouldn't have been there is what you're saying to me. No. Um, what did that do to your relationship with her? Um, after being there, I didn't have a relationship with her. Even before that, I don't think we had much of a relationship. And um, I think that just kept tearing it even more down. Colin told me he was finally able to leave the institution after writing John this gut-wrenching letter begging for help. Quote, you're my dad, my savior. Wow. Please help me. I'm counting on you to get me out of here. Daddy, I love you. You wrote a note to your dad. As a matter of fact, you might have even written it in crayon to, and you asked him for help to get you out of that. It's very telling this note too. Dear dad, I'm not trying to trick you. Now, the reason this is so heartbreaking for a few reasons, he had to write his dad to get him out of this institution. Did the dad know he was there? Yeah, he had to have known, right? Was there bridges burned because kids chose to go with Kate? Probably. And so John's got some shit to answer for on this side too, to be honest with you, right? But can you blame him though? Because the alienation seems real, real strong on Kate's side, right? She's very much a person that encompasses all. She's the one that has the strong personality. She's the one everybody has to walk on eggshells around. She's the one that makes rules. She wears the pants. So as far as parent parental alienation goes, that's really, really hard to take in because John is a parent who's, and the kids have been alienated from him and turned against him, likely are living with the mom because they got whatever they wanted. And John was likely, you know, hurt because of that. But he's got a lot of answer for, for that too. They both have to answer for this. Like none of this happens without John and Kate's both making the decision to put their family on the on, on TV, which I honestly believe is heavily skewed in Kate saying we're doing this, not John. Although I'm pretty sure they did have lots to do with the millions and millions and millions of dollars that they made, right? So I'm not trying to say John is not to blame. He absolutely is. And that's very telling. I'm not trying to trick you. I still love you. I told mom I want to live with you. She said no, right? So there's the alienation part right there where John feels hurt because his kids said, I want to live with mom. And that's, as a dad, that would be so, that would pierce you and break your heart beyond anything you've ever experienced before. Like, I don't even know how I would deal with that because I love my children more than anything. And it sounds like he did too, but because they chose that life, he felt like F you and that sucks because they're children, but it sounds like he came around a little later, but Kate didn't. That place. Right. Um, what was going on? Um, I was in a dark place mentally. Um, I think 
being in a place like that it does more damage than than it helps you um so he's being abused hurting me he's giving me bruises and sitting on my chest till the point i can't breathe you're my dad my savior i was hopeless so he's an institution that was that could ruin that ruined his life bliss um and and you know i figured out how to write to my dad and that was kind of one thing that that kind of helped me mentally figure out that there was a way out of there why don't they name this institution why are you putting your kids in institutions where they're being abused that's don't ever do that like, I can understand if you have a problem teenager, there are places that are safe and healthy for them to be in. I get that. Okay. I understand that there's all, like, there's, there's not, like, I'm telling you, real, dude, if you're going to send your kid to a place where they need the help that they need to get, you better do your, you better do your due diligence and research all the people who've gone there and find the right place. Because I know those places do exist for reasons, um, but some of them are just there to make money and they're, they're very, very predatory. And, you know, a second chance, you know, redemption, if you would. Um, so it gave me hope in my future, for sure. Colin moved in with his dad and twin sister, Hannah. In 2018, John says he was granted temporary full custody. Your mom didn't show up to the custody here. Did it bother you that she didn't show up? It didn't really bother me. I mean, they just gave it to my dad and, you know, she wasn't there to put her word in, so. There you go. Doesn't care to the point where she doesn't even show up for custody of her child. John and Kate, again, from the beginning, didn't give a shit about their kids. John finally learned later that, you know, life's too short. I, I got to throw it all away so that I can have a relationship with my kids. It sounds like he's trying his best, right? Even though it's kind of too little too late, to be honest with you. Like, I truly think that. But Kate seems to have doubled down on the bullshit. Right? Imagine not showing up and just saying, hey, I still love you, you're my kid. Like, don't forget that Kate raised her children. And when you see this interview with her daughters on a TV, like, you just wait. Like, I know I'm, I'm building up to that, but Kate is the problem here, everybody. And so obviously, John was the root of the problem as well. But you've got to give credit where credit is due. If any of these family vloggers decide one day, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe I did this to my kids. I'm doing a full 180 reversal. I'm taking everything down. I'm apologizing to my kids. I would high five them digitally. I would take my videos down about them and I would say good for you for learning because there is redemption for everybody. Even Micah. Like if Micah and James came out right now and sat down and said, we are absolutely the shittiest people on earth. We're so sorry we did that. There was no excuse for it. We shouldn't have done it. We're just so, we're terrible people and we're sorry. You know, at least there'd be some redemption if they took, you know, at least there'd be some sort of like, okay, well, at least you admit it. But they, to this day, they only apologize to their fans for not telling them the truth, not for what they did. And it was shitty what they did. Okay. But at least, and that's what I'm saying for John, he at least switched it. And by 2009 was like, we're done with this world. Two years into it, or like, this is the worst things ever happened to our family. I'm done with it. You got to give him credit where credit is due, where Kate is like, no, I'm going on to make more millions because this is my dream. I want to exploit my children for more money and more money and more money. It's so heartbreaking. That's what happened. How has life been for you and Hannah together? Um, oh, Hannah, I, I would do anything for my sister, and I love her to death. Hannah, uh, she was a big part of, um, you know, my emotional support. She helped me out a lot and still does to this day. You know, she does so much for me. How is your relationship today with your dad? Um, it's good. I would say it's like every other son and dad. <laughs> I mean, we butt heads a lot. Um, it's just pretty normal. Sadly, Colin's relationship with Kate and his six other siblings remains estranged. But he is hopeful that's so sad. Hopeful that eventually it can be rebuilt. It's a and oh, before I show you the scene, and you know what? I think once those kids start realizing the detrimental life that they were led in the way that their mom led them down this craziness, once they get to understand what alienation is and the, how manipulative Kate was, I hope there's redemption in the end for everybody in this family. To be honest, even including Kate. But I don't think it's going to happen without massive amounts of apologies and inward looking and therapy and everything else. And I don't think Kate's ever going to do that because she's such a bitch. A mommy and a baby bear. That's what we need. Oh, well, where's everybody else? If there's a me Oh, my God. On camera. That's me and you. That's a special bond between you and I. Where's everybody else? Listen, douchebag. This was between you and I. One more, re one more telling reason that it's really not about the kids at all. It's about Kate and about the show and everything else. And these other family vloggers who do this, like Doherty Dozen is one of the biggest ones we talk about today. There's absolute massive amounts of favoritism towards certain children and everybody can see it because you just can't hide it, especially when you put every waking moment on camera. Right? You, just, you can't hide it. And it's so gross. Message you could send to your mom, what would you say to her? Um, hey, it looks hugs her kids. There's no love between her and her kids. Zero. Kate, I hope, 
man, I hope so. and a lot of times creators and people in shows, they don't watch their shows. They don't go back and look. If you were to give Kate two words to who she really was that encompasses her, her whole being, cold hearted. It's unfortunate that we didn't have a relationship. I think every son wants to have a relationship with their mom. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm doing very well. Um, and, and yeah, I think I'm good. So. But you would love to have a relationship with her if you could. Yes, that it, it would be ideal. Isn't that crazy? This kid who's like, what is he, 18? Yeah, it'd be ideal to have a relationship with my mom. But it's not, we're not going to be able to because my mom doesn't want to have a relationship with me. He's not saying I don't want a relationship with my mom, like she can piss off into the sun. He's saying, yeah, I do. And it's not there. That's only on Kate. That's not on him. That's all on Kate. Because she did this to her kids. Right? That's all on them. It's not the kids' fault. Get to talk to your other brothers and sisters. No, I have not spoken with my siblings in, in probably like five or six years now. Wow. Um, Shit. It's tough. You know, I would love to have a relationship with them. I would love, you know, for us to one day come together, you know, have dinner together, talk. You know, just wow. have the relationship and catch up on the things that we that we lost, the time that we lost. Do you want to send a message to them? Because I'm sure they'll see this. Um, I love, like, I, I love my siblings. I mean, you know, I love them to death. You know, they're the only. Hmm. Sorry. No, I get it. <laughs> There's nothing like the bond between brothers and sisters. So imagine being alienated from your brothers and sisters whom you love. Like, I'm, I'm sure that people fight and siblings fight. That's true. But these are kids, man. There's got to be redemption for kids. At, uh, even if there's not redemption for these adults, give the kids the opportunity for redemption, right? The alienation on this side, and I'm, it's going to come out eventually. Kate is so, like, I don't even know anything about this woman except for what I've seen. Has got to be one of the most manipulative people on earth because the alienation is so strong. Brother hasn't seen his siblings in five or six years. 13, what was he, 13, 12, last spoke to, like, kids. Holy shit, man, this should be... Kate should be canceled and like called out and so then John obviously, but at least he's trying. You know what I'm saying? It's so hard for me to square that because I know that John is also responsible because the root of this thing all came from when they started this. Wow. That's so sad. There, you want to do you, can somebody get yeah, a tissue real quick? Okay. okay. Grab a tissue. I don't like that ET did that though. Shouldn't have done that. Don't want to smudge the makeup. <laughs> there is no shame in loving your siblings. Not at all. Can you actually just re-ask the question? Yeah, yeah. What would you like to say to your siblings? Um, I love them very much. And, you know, kind of how I see it is without parents involved, it's just me and them. And um, I really hope that, you know, one day when I have kids that, you know, my kids will know their aunt and uncles. Colin's busy schedule did lead to a terrifying scare earlier this month when he fell asleep at the wheel oh, and flipped shit. his car. Uh, look at this picture. That's scary. That is scary. What happened? Um, I was on my way to work. It was like two in the afternoon, and I'm working full time in high school, so mm -hmm. I'm tired. Uh, no, I should be working full time in high school. Again, Kate is worth. What is Kate Gosselin's net worth according to internets? Oh, it's only five hundred thousand. Did they lose everything? According to Kate Gosselin, October thirtieth, twenty twenty two, the majority of what we made, I personally took and put in a college fund for the kids. They made millions. What kind of college are they going to? Because they will go to college. Kate said at the time. So I use coupons. We don't wear top brands. Those things to me really aren't overly important, but college school in their house where they live is important. And apparently, according to the Sun, US Sun, Kate Gosselin stole 100,000 from our kids, ex John claims, but Fire TV mom and sister just borrowed cash to survive. Where did their money go, man? What the F? Again, ill gotten gains. Like, Doherty Dozen is going down this path. Spending hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars just on groceries a year, okay? Hundreds of thousands on vacations and stupid shit she doesn't eat on Amazon, okay? They're going down that path. If you don't, if you're making hundreds of thousands a month and you don't have anything to show for it at the end, holy shit, okay? And put this in your pipe and smoke it. Alicia would not. Alicia wants nothing more in her life, in her heart, and her passions than to do exactly what happened to these kids to her kids. 
She thinks money and fame is everything and is ignoring all of these shows that already happened and is trying to do this. Anybody who puts their kids on TV from this point forward should be ostracized as child abusers. It should not be allowed to happen anymore. Giving the reality of your kids' lives on the internet should be outlawed. And those who try to do it and exploit children should be canceled for it. Do you know what I'm saying? So if TLC continues to do stupid, stupid shows like this, they should not be watched and should be canceled for it. It should be like pedos. It should be like what happened to Balenciaga. Exploitation is exploitation. And it should all be treated as such. Sleep with the wheel. Next thing I know, um, the car was flipped. And I'm just like sliding upside down across traffic and, and uh, finishing high school, graduating. Um, I'm looking at the Marine Corps. You know, I've always wanted to be a Marine The music like... Marine Corps, the music. Oh my God. And so I think that's the next step. Um, also, can't be sidestepped or not looked at that doing this interview on ET got them paid, got John paid because he's still a minor, just so you're aware. So we can't overlook it. I'm just saying John's doing the rounds, he's doing his interviews, and he's getting paid for them. So don't forget that. And maybe. I just, I just want to make sure we say that. Just got to be fair to that because they are getting paid. Do they deserve to get paid for it? Sure. They're telling the story. It's their story to tell. If they want to get paid for it, go for it. And that's going to set this kid up for more success. Okay. You know, in the end, ET's trying to call out this terrible behavior. And it's good. It's it's a net positive in the end. That other kids who are in this situation can look to Colin and say, okay, I'm not struggling through this alone. Or kids that might be going through this might be able to catch this and say, okay, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And realize how much more power they have. Would you ever do reality TV again? Um, no, say no. You know, I think, you know, I've become somewhat of a natural at it. So um, I think it'd be cool to kind of no. do it now. Don't. And I'll, I'll probably remember the memories of it and, and I'll see it a little differently too um, versus not remembering it when I was younger. I mean, if you're 18 and go for it, I guess. I mean, at the same time, this, I mean, this is an example of me saying, no, don't do it, don't do it. I mean, this kid had a, went through the shit, but now he's like, I'm an adult. I can make that decision now. I mean, I... <laughs> I hope he doesn't. Thank you so much. Oh what do you God. remember about doing the show? Um, well, I don't remember like the depth of it or like the little details. Um, mm -hmm. Something that you never forget is like the presence of the cameras. Like there's mm -hmm. always cameras there. They're always on you. Colin is stubborn, yet kind. Fans watch Colin since he was three years old, growing up on TV. John and Kate Plus 8 was one of TLC's highest rated programs ever. Can you stop breathing so loud, honey? On TV, she said this, like she thought she'd be cool. And what does John say? Like, <laughs> Holy shit. She's, oh. It was such a phenomenon that in 2009, 10.6 million viewers tuned in to watch John and Kate's televised separation announcement. Uh, Kate and I have decided to separate. I'm not very fond of... <laughs> There it is. I know it's a little bit of a funny spot in this whole thing. That's the hair that created the Karen phenomenon right there. And <laughs> people still get this haircut. The idea. Personally. Go to bingo. You'll see. It's got like a splash of purple or pink in there. Personally, Do you wish your parents could have stayed together and worked things out? You know, it, it would be nice. Um, nobody wants their family to be torn apart. Um, yeah. But I, I do wish like could have made something work out again imagine being so famous that when your your shit hits the fan everybody gets to know you had to make statements you gotta hire lawyers and like spend all your money imagine you know I, I bet you a lot of their fortune went to lawyers they don't speak now do you wish they could s at least they would speak to each other if they had the capability of co-parenting that'd be nice you know they don't need to be best friends but it would have been nice if they could be adults about it and get along and do it for the sake of their kids See, the kids know more than the parents do. Now that's f scary. If you guys hadn't done that reality show, do you think your family would be intact? Um, no. I think so. Yes. I, you know, I think the pressure of, of being in front of the whole world and you know everything you, every mistake you make is 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 out yeah, there. Yeah, that's true. Um, I think that was a big influence of them not being together, and I definitely think they'd still be together. I think that Kate. Maybe, and maybe he's right, because I'm thinking if Kate is like that and it was only amplified on camera, it means she was like that anyway, but amplified it more. Now, it sounds like Kate was made out to be the villain, and I don't know if this is true or not, but it sounds like this is how re reality television works. Only, the only, the reality television that works is the shit that, like, the, Kate's like, can you stop breathing like that? Can you, like, they made her out to be the bitch villain, right? And so that's good television. 
It's not good television to have, have a loving marriage and just be like, yeah, we're all good. It's not good television, right? That's why I think Dr. D. Dozen is doing what they're doing. She's becoming a villain because it makes good television. She's being groomed by higher up professionals to be like, here's what you do. Let's look at your analytics. When you do something crazy, let's see how that hits and let's turn that into a television show. But it just amplifies shitty behavior. And in the end, the cameras, you become someone different on camera. It's so creepy and this should never be allowed. If Doherty doesn't get a video, if Doherty doesn't get their own show, there should be no depths we go to to try to boycott that shit at, at, at every level. It should not be allowed to go through. So John and Kate plus eight basically ruined your family. Yes. I, I think so, in my opinion. Well, I think in everybody's opinion. All right. So that's quick interview. We're, obviously, I don't have enough time to go through the other ones, but I wanted to show you this one here. And so after watching that interview, someone sent me this one. And this is from, I think, 2014. Very, very, very telling. And you guys have to watch this because this is exactly who Kate was. And this is what the kids are forced to deal with and have to do. And they're getting paid to be on these types of shows. But watch this. Well, we have not seen you or gotten to talk to you two in a long, long time. And you're out because you want to let the world know that you're doing okay. Natty, what would you want to say about how you and your sister and your family are doing? Um, Maddie? Your words. Oh my God. So if you want to see who this woman is, and she's on live TV doing this. Like, the cringe. Okay? Oh my God. No, it's it's hard. Chance. It's a hard Good question. Enough. Look at her. She's like, look at her mom. What, what do I say? What about you, Kara? <laughs> oh. So this is their chance to talk. This is the most wordless I've heard them all morning. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't want to speak for them, but Maddie, go. But I have to because this is... Because I have to, because I this is what I do. Ahead, um, sort of the things that you said in the magazine, that years later, they're good, they're fine. Go for it, Matt. It's your chance. No, you just said it. Holy so, shit. Well, let me ask you this, girls. I mean, to go out and be in People magazine. I feel like this is kind of like the girls planned this, maybe, and said, nah, let's throw this bitch right under the bus. To say, hey, we're doing okay. Why did you feel you needed to say that? Do you think people had the wrong impression of you guys, Kara? Oh my, <laughs> my gosh. What Kara yes thinking? No. <laughs> Go for it. The interpreter. Oh, wait, well. Oh my god. What is she thinking? This is crazy. Do people have the wrong impression of you? Oh. I wouldn't say wrong. I would just say not like the full like story. Mm hmm Like a lot of people like think that. Okay, you want to know what parental alienation looks like? This is it. This is the same thing as... Alienation is basically grooming. Okay? These kids were told what to say before they went on stage. And they didn't say it. Um, filming, like, our show has damaged us, but it's only really helped. It's not really done. Does she sound like she's convinced of what she just said there? It's only really helped. Has it helped? Tore your family to shreds. You don't get to see your other brother and sister for years and years. Has that really? I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not berating her. I'm not mad at her. She's been coached to say something, but doesn't believe it. She doesn't believe the words are coming out of her mouth. They're more aware of what is out there. Let me stay. The, Let me stay. Know, inaccuracies, things that are said by the general public, their father, whoever in general, because their friends talk about it at school. So I sort of am forced to kind of inform them. And mm -hmm. um, I think the most upset, we talk about it a lot, and the most upset they are is because they get really frustrated that people assume certain things in our house, and they always say, but that's not how it is, Mommy. Why do they say that about us? Yeah. That's because you put your damn life on TV and you became the villain because it paid you a lot of money to be the villain. And you probably are the damn villain. But you don't get to say, oh, yeah, why do they have this thought about us? Because you put it on the out in the world, you idiot. Why don't you tell your children? That's because that's what we put out there. And so what they see is what they see. It might not be the truth to you in the back end, but you put it out there. You said it was reality. So people are stupid and they're going to believe it's reality. So you don't get to say, well, it's not reality anymore. You don't get to say that. You, Kate. I mean, to have them come out here to do a big magazine article, to have them come on national TV and sort of put them on the spot like this, is is that helpful to them? Is, it, is that is the it right helpful? decision or does it kind of, that continued exposure, I mean, continue the injury to them? Yes, um, it does. I mean, there is no injury to begin with. And oh, <laughs> is there? Is there not? Okay. Anyway, it ends right there. There is injury. And she has to say that because her lawyer's like, yeah, you can't, you can never admit that there's an injury or anything. You can't do that. 
So that's who she really is. And this is the kids have to walk in eggshells. They're scared to say something. And apparently there is somebody who came forward after this interview that she berated her children backstage after this and said, I can't believe you made me look like that. You embarrassed the shit out of me. Instead of just saying, you know, this, this is the craziness of this whole world. And these types of people that in that are, that live in these worlds, they're terrible people. And they are required to be that because no one else would do shit like this unless you are a terrible, unless you are a terrible person. It requires you to be an asshole and a terrible parent to do what these people do. That is like a prerequisite. Narcissistic assholes do this. If you're not one of those, you won't, you won't be successful in these things. So we're going to continue this. John has an interview on another station. We're going to do another video on this probably tomorrow. I, this is a very interesting topic, and I want to continue on it because it's very interesting. And it ties very well in together with what we're talking about. So take a deep breath. <sighs> Jeez, these a-holes, right? Just terrible. Remember, if you watch this stuff when you're young, don't feel guilty about it today because we didn't really realize until recently how shitty this is. But don't watch shit going forward. You know, if you know how bad this is and you continue to put your social media currency or your time and effort and money into these types of things, then you're complicit in it, unfortunately. So don't watch these people. Watch them through me. Watch them on YouTube, W-Y-E-W, -E or find a way to watch it without giving them the view if you really want to watch it. They are benefiting from you even hate watching. So don't. But you guys are amazing, incredible, and valuable. Christmas is coming. I'm so excited. Don't fly flare. And don't forget, you need to be here because you are amazing. I'll see you tomorrow.